up it's your girl Shayla T and welcome back to another video so happy 2021 and let's get right into this video as you can see by the title I am talking about my toddler he is two years old he will be three in May and we're gonna be talking about developmental issues if you're not familiar he already has some developmental delays with his growth motor skills so I'll put that so you can check that out but we are now talking about speech and his talking being delayed lack of talking and is it just a speech delay or is it autism so let's get into it i first want to talk about what is autism so autism is difficulty with communication social interactions obsessive interests and repetitive behaviors so the symptoms can vary for autism and they can go from mild to pretty severe and so that's what i had to research like for one what is autism and then what is speech delay so speech delay is just like how it sounds it's a delay in speech so i want to tell you how i got here so first I noticed even in my last video when I was talking about his gross motor skills I had noticed that he wasn't saying a lot of words so the thing about Anthony my baby my baby my sweet baby so the thing about him is he would understand so like when I'm saying something I tell him to go get something he understood perfectly but he wasn't verbally expressing himself so there are developmental milestones that typically kids will follow but like I said in my last video every child is different and no matter what is going on with your child they go at their own pace right there's no right or there's no wrong way to parenting <laughs> and there's no right or wrong way for a kid to develop and learn so usually typically most kids develop at a certain sp pace but don't you fret sometimes kids develop at their own pace sometimes they may develop other issues so it's just important that you're recognizing what's going on with your child so that way you can know what's happening and that way you can give them the best care possible so I had noticed around 12 months old he wasn't saying much which my of my older kids they talked really early like they were 12 months they were talking but you know I didn't want to just put that on him he's the baby so a lot of times what they say with the baby is that everyone is taking care of the baby right so sometimes when you're the youngest child and everyone is way way older than you they talk for you like everyone does everything for him so sometimes the baby just doesn't have to do much so i knew that that could have been a possibility of what was going on so i decided to just you know let him go through his motions i didn't want to worry about it or get too concerned but once he was approaching around one and a half so that's like 18 months ish I noticed that it, he it just wasn't developing like he still wasn't talking so what I did is when he went to his wellness checkup I believe it was 20 months I don't know so he went to his wellness checkup or 18 months I don't know maybe 18 months he went to his wellness checkup and you know they usually have you check out a questionnaire of you know what's going on and so they did notice that he was behind so what I can say is the biggest thing is be an advocate for your child because you know, right? You know best, like your mama or your daddy or your dada. <laughs> and you are with your child for a long amount of time, a long period of time. So you know when things are not going right or you know when you have concerns so i told her that i had concerns about him possibly being autistic and the reason why i had those concerns it wasn't just the delay in speech although that kind of like combined with the other things kind of like you know made me think about it but he definitely was a child who needed things to be in a particular way so for example say if this is laying flat like this 
if he wants it to be this way and I flip it this way, he will keep flipping it that way. He'll keep flipping it that way. And there's no way that he would let it be on the side that he didn't want it to be. So another example is he would watch like YouTube kids and he would listen to specific parts and specific songs like Coco Melon and he would want it to play over and over and over. Sometimes a lot of times, sometimes just a few times. So I kind of just, you know, sat back and I realized those things and those things are usually associated with autism. So coupled with the delay in speech, coupled with the you know, the repetitive behaviors that made me concerned. Now, I know with some autistic children, it doesn't usually come out. I mean, it doesn't come out until about two to three years old. I don't really think they diagnose autism before two years old. So I, you know, had these concerns when he was about one and a half, but the doctor just said kind of give him time to figure it out. But she wanted to be proactive. So just like in my last video when he had a gross motor skills delay, she wanted to be proactive in making sure that if he was autistic, that he would have the earliest care possible. Because the earlier you can detect um, autism and get help, the better it could be. This got me to researching, right? Because it's like, if this is a possibility that, that my son may be autistic, I want to know as much as I can about this. So this got me digging and digging and digging and diving. So I want to share this with you. So I kind of wanted to know what causes autism. So if he is autistic, what is causing this? And the news is they don't know but it's kind of like generally accepted that autism is caused by abnor ab abnormalities <laughs> in the brain so that's kind of like what they're thinking that's like usually what they see amongst autism but you know again there's no single cause so there's no set cause like this cause this so I learned that I thought that was interesting and then that got me wanting to know can autism go away so there's no cure for autism just like there's no known cause there's no cure but it is to be said that early intervention using like skills training and behavior training can definitely help so it doesn't mean that these symptoms will go away doesn't mean that you know you have some autistic children who have light symptoms you have some who have more severe symptoms but again knowing and getting early treatment can definitely be helpful not saying that it's going to be a cure not saying it's going to be easy but it can definitely be helpful so with that being said you probably want to know is it speech delay or is it autism I currently still don't know because when everything was happening it was right before COVID and then boom COVID hit and I wasn't able to get him in to have like an evaluation because it has to be evaluated and all those good things. But before the evaluation, in ruling out speech delay, you want to make sure that it's not a hearing problem. So he did see a hearing specialist and his hearing was okay. Um, so all it is left is to take this evaluation for autism, which then I had insurance problems. So he's still on the waiting list. A lot of times these waiting lists are very long to get in and it's kind of quite frustrating. But I just want to say, if you are worried about speech delay, if you're worried about autism, like I'm not a professional, right? But I'm just a mama here to help. So it's going to be okay. Just breathe. And just to know that, oh my gosh, some of the most brilliant minds are autistic and it's okay. For me having two other kids, I know that this could be scary, right? It's scary thinking that your child may have something that there's no known cure for and you don't really know the range of how severe it is. Now, I can say right now, he is almost three. He'll be three in May and he is talking a lot more. Apple. Yeah. Good job. I have realized that it's not full sentences quite yet, but he'll say small sen sentences like, it's time to eat. Where are you? Peekaboo. He even said, I love you in y'all. Like, 
this makes me almost want to cry just having a kid who isn't nonverbal, you miss those things so just having him say i love you it might have not been the clearest it was so special it was so special i just want to cry but i'm not gonna cry i'm not gonna cry i'm not gonna cry i'm not gonna cry but <laughs> I just want to be encouraging to any moms, dads going through this right now that it's okay. Just do as much research you, as you can. Advocate for your kid. Read to your kids. Speak to them and just know that even if they're nonverbal, you can learn, uh, do like sign language for certain things. And that's what I was doing in the beginning, like milk and, you know, all of those things. So it's okay it's okay but I just wanted to just do a quick overview a quick story time about what was going on with my baby's development I get a lot of questions about his gross motor skills and that is perfectly fine you know he got out of that but you know right now we are facing this and it's okay I have to tell myself it is okay it's just you have to be your your baby's advocate and we all want what's best for our children so <sighs> yeah i love motherhood and parenthood to know that there is like sort of community we all go through these things there's no blueprint to parenting there's no right and there's no wrong way so i am definitely here if you are going through this if you know someone is going through this you can always hit me up on my instagram you can always dm me you can always email me my email is in the link below and i'm definitely here to talk and to help so let me know, Are is this something that you're currently going through? Do you have a nonverbal child? What are some of the ways you're getting through that? Let me know in the comment section below. I am here to support and I am out.